Welcome to Fables of Our Deconstruction, a podcast where we examine our systems of faith and culture together as we grow as people. I'm your host, Dylan. If you like what you hear, check me out at patreon.com slash Dylan. If you'd like to be on a future episode, leave me a message at 515-318-7569 or find Fables of Our Deconstruction on Anchor FM and leave me a voice message. Leave your name, otherwise I will keep you anonymous. Let's get into it! Uh, what a crazy freaking week it has been. As a matter of fact, two weeks since our episode on Marduk, and I have the unfortunate opportunity to let you know that I'm not quite ready to talk about Lucifer yet. I'm really excited, I'm doing research, I'm still reading stuff and listening to stuff, but I am not ready. So today I want to break down, sort of take part how we treat ourselves as we're moving through new spaces. I was listening to the most recent episode of Atheist Experience, uh, and, and one of the things that struck me was I'm already beating myself up for stuff that I'm just falling behind on. Um, I'm not ready to talk about Lucifer, <laughs> right? And on top of that, I'm I'm not ready for this event that I've got coming up this weekend, on the uh, sixth, fifth, uh, sixth, and seventh of August, <laughs> I have my first juried art show. I've been in tons of conventions. I've done some sidewalk art stuff. I've done wine walks, but I've never been in an art show where I have to apply with uh, like a resume, a, a portfolio of my work, and they tell me if I'm in or not, and you you pay to apply. These are juried art shows. They're a bigger deal. They're more about selling your work, celebrating your work, than a convention that's more about putting you in touch with uh, celebrities, specifically older celebrities or or not necessarily A-listers, but getting you in touch with those people. And, and now I'm in this realm where I get to have my art celebrated and I'm mortified and horrified and I have this set up that I'm not ready with and it's nerve wracking and I'm having sleepless nights and I'm beating myself up and <sighs> so I'm listening to the atheist experience and one of the last people they speak with he's he's talking about how he's having a hard time you know getting over some of the irrational things like having a hard time getting out of bed with any thought that there might not be a way to see his loved ones at the end of all this because we don't have substantial or valuable empirical evidence that there's an afterlife, right? Now, in a realistic world, we just have to say we don't know. We don't know if there is one, but the evidence doesn't suggest there is. And that was difficult for this guy. And he said he's he's in that part of atheism where he's entering into it. He's, he's trying to see if that's where he lies, if he's more skeptical, if he, he's in need of more evidence, but he, he's having a difficult time being kind to himself. And that kind of struck me. I'm having the same thing as I step into this new world of art shows, um, and making this more about like what I'm doing and being able to embrace more original work like I do on Twitch almost every day. And it keeps me up at night. It makes it hard to get up in the morning. And I realize like I'm having the same issues. And what the hosts this week said, they, they said, hey, You've got to be able to, to be kind to yourself and make space for yourself and your feelings. And it's okay to have irrational thoughts, even if you can rationalize them away. And it's okay to hold on to something irrational as long as it's not hurting your life or getting in the way of others. And they they helped this caller understand that 
you're new in these feelings and these ways of being and you need to give yourself some slack and man i wish i could take that advice i'm trying really hard to take that advice when it comes to art shows and festivals and what am i doing and and how am i going to make all this work cuz i mean frankly i'm an artist so i live off of peanuts when it comes to pay right but I'm I'm mortified that it's not going to work out, that I'm going to get there. I'm going to get to the end of this thing. I'm going to get to the end of this week. And this is just going to be a terrifying situation for me. So it's taking so much of my energy to bring myself to be ready for it. And furthermore, it's taking so much of my energy that I can't be ready to talk about Lucifer. And I want to talk about demons. (laughs) Right? But here I am. Not rocking you like a hurricane. Here I am, terrified. And so I find myself realizing that, like, just like the color moving into atheism, I'm moving into something new, and I have to find ways to take care of myself. And one of the things I'm doing in order to take care of myself today is literally it is Wednesday. Today is the day the podcast comes out, and I am almost 10 hours late on making sure the podcast is in your feed and ready to rock and roll. But I'm going to record it anyway. I'm going to talk about what's challenging. I'm going to use this as a way to stay accountable for what I'm trying to accomplish. And yeah, we're going to bring Lucifer into this. (laughs) It's just going to be another couple weeks. And you know what? I've had some of the worst events of my life have been Comic-Cons. And... I can take more risks there, I think, because I've already experienced failure, where this is all new, and I'm not prepared for whatever feelings are going to come. And that's daunting. So whatever we're walking into, whether you're walking into a new perspective, new evidence, a new town, a new style of work, a new way of even approaching something, we've got to try to take a step back Realize that that takes adjustment. And that nothing's going to be overnight. And that it's extremely hard. Because I know that even if it doesn't look like it, I'm having a (laughs) rough time. And I know that it's been an impact on my wife and my household. And I'm trying. I'm really trying. And hopefully if I can get out of my own damn way, I can be a little less anxious about it. And get something done. I've got a bunch of stuff i got to frame today. I've got, I've got to figure out what I'm taking with, art-wise. And how I'm going to show that to the world. So, that's what's on my mind this week. is How, how can we deconstruct in the moment? And say, hey, how am I looking at this? And how am I thinking about this? And how, what, what, what's a better perspective I can have on my situation? I don't know what it's going to be like in two weeks. I don't know if I'm going to come away from this event with a tremendous amount of success, failure, or something in between. And that, that's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> but I got to know that, like I said, I've had failed Comic-Cons, and that this is no different. This is just another event, but the thing is, is I'm one of the focal points. I am booth number one! I'm right in the crosshairs of the event. People are going to see me. And my work is going to have an impact. And right now I draw a lot of female bodies as demons and satyrs. And I draw a lot of fantasy characters with snakes and robot parts. And I'm going to piss somebody off. But if you don't get a reaction, then you didn't have any value at all, in my opinion. So I, I hope... I hope there's someone excited to see my work. But i got to remember that any reaction was benefit. And anything I learn is going to shape my future. And i got to be able to walk with that. i got to be able to stand up, take that with me, move forward. And even if I have to cling to something irrational, like just believing it's going to work without evidence, then, then maybe in the moment I need that. But it's it's been hard. 
So my hope is that in two weeks we'll have enough evidence uh, <laughs> of what took place that I'll be able to set that down and have finished research on Lucifer so we can have a solid episode. Because I know Satan is my superhero podcast. You're out there. You're listening. You're loving. You're supporting. You're bringing the goods. And I got to bring my goods for you. Also, want to give a shout out to my good friend Will. I'm not going to drop your last name because you haven't given me permission. Uh, I will do my best to edit episode 16. Sounds like there were some audio issues. I have been editing and recording on the road and in bathtubs. <laughs> and that has been a hell of a challenge. And somehow I'm able to give myself more permission to make mistakes here. Here in a brand new space. That I've been able to give myself permission to do the same in functionally brand new spaces with my career. Crazy to think about. But I want us all to take apart how we're thinking about things as we move forward. And that's my goal for today. This has been Fables of Our Deconstruction. Fables of Our Deconstruction is created by me, Dylan Jacobson. Please like and review Fables wherever you get your podcasts, and join my community, the Brimstone Order. Get your own horns, embrace your inner monster at patreon.com slash Dylan. I'd also like to thank Apes of the State for the use of their song, Moments a Year From Now, as my intro and outro. And remember, you're never alone. We are in this together. <laughs>